Aurora Everlasting. August 15, 2552, 728. Dr. Ten, yeah? Hey guys! Or just guy, singular. Huh. No need to be upset, at least I'm here. Where are you going, Dr. Ten, yeah? Breakfast? It will be delivered to your room this morning. Huh? Oh, let me guess. Doctor's orders? Yes. <sighs> Am I allowed to go anywhere? No. Are we still pretending I'm not a prisoner, though? So we've stopped. Lovely. Can I stay out here with you then? What? I need a change of scenery while I wait for my breakfast. I... I suppose you can. When do I meet we today? I'm assuming there's another session planned. Can I let the lab rest after all? The doctor's busy. She hasn't scheduled you for any sessions for the rest of the week. Wait, what? What happened? Y yes, uh, a few days ago she was in a hurry to kill me over this. <sighs> oh yes, the good old porous secrecy. Do you never get tired of it? <sighs> Whatever. How long until breakfast is? Evelyn? Leo. What? Come on. We're moving on. No, wait! Dr. Tenye, I will not hesitate to use a sedative if you resist. No, stop! Don't worry, Leo. Someone's coming for Keep us. Walking. Wait, just wait! Ugh. Wait, Evelyn! Evelyn! Who's coming for us? August 15, 2552, 7.43. You're not nervous, are you? Of course I'm nervous, Margot. Are you not? Not really. <laughs> How the hell are you not nervous? We have a plan. Get in, get Leo, get Orson, get out. Nowhere does it say I should be nervous. I... You have to be told to be nervous? No, I'm just not. We have a plan. I'm not 100% sure we won't get sold out the moment we step into this place, though. She's our best shot. She's kind of a bitch. You know I can hear you, right? Yes, I'm very aware of the fact. Listen, I get it. But I'm trying to help you here. Yet you're not the one putting your life on the line. I told you. I'm more help directing you from here and causing a distraction if you need it. Still don't like it. You don't have to. This is our only chance. Why are you nice to the person who tortured our friend? She admitted it. Margot, there's a time and a place for that anger. Right now is not the time. I dislike her just as much as you do. But she's helping us. This is as dangerous for her as it is for us. She's not out there. No, but she could be discovered at any moment. They could trace her signal and then she's just as dead as we are. She's right. Of course you'd say that. If Orson isn't where you said she'll be... You'll kill me. And if Leo isn't where I said they'll be, you'll kill me too. And if I lie to you, you'll kill me as well. I got it. Good, you better. They're coming. And they seem much faster than you said. Just get ready. Just get ready. This is the person who doesn't have to jump onto a moving truck. I'm turning the sensors off now, and the door is open. Let's go. We're in. I know. This just have to be waste management. Why is it always waste management? First, the sewer is now a garbage truck. No one likes to check this kind of stuff. Yeah, get why. That's stinky. <laughs> stinky? What did you want me to say? Foul, rancid, disgusting, filthy. I didn't know you had an encyclopedia for breakfast. Margot. No, really, it's quite surprising that you know this many words. You're an asshole. Mm. Yeah. At least I'm not nervous. Why are you still talking? This is supposed to be stealthy They can't hear us, though. Because I activated the noise cancelling when you got in. If they turn it off again... Okay, got it. Go 
quiet and stealthy. Margo, that means you need to shut up. August 15, 2552, 9. Recently, the aurora, the unknown phenomenon we have been researching, only affects clones. Not all of them, they have to be fairly young, and they have to witness the process. They won't remember their first encounter, ever comprehend what they've seen, but once they have, they're constantly being affected by it. Our first example is Xavier Bennett, commanding officer of the Ender 2 mission. He had disappeared off the ship. In their ignorance, our predecessors assumed his colleague Devin Chex had murdered him and sent him on his way via an airlock, but there was no real proof for their theory. However, there is for mine. Bennett's body was found during the Recuperara terror mission by Dr. Park and her team. That's not true. How, pray tell, have you come to this conclusion? Dr. Park and her crew were exposed to a hazardous environment, while the recording you're referring to shows them unaffected by it. Later recordings prove their exposure to hallucinogens and their descent into what can only be described as madness. There is no trustworthy testimonial to be found within her protocols. I'm sure you'll be pleased to hear then that I'm not talking about the reports, Councilmember Crofton. The DNA they took from the corpse does not match Bennett's. <laughs> But it does match Leia ten years in quite a remarkable way. How is that possible? The results are by no means the same, but the DNA differs from Bennett's original one, in the same way Leo ten years DNA now differs from the one in our database. As to the samples taken from Evelyn Coyle by Dr. Wallach in 43, and I can guarantee, had the team in charge of Devon Checks filed his health data properly, we would get the same results from him as well. Because they were all affected by the same phenomenon, the one that will pave our way back to normality. You need proof of these claims, Dr. Reed. You can't I have everything right here. Ender 2 mission, Recuperara mission, Ender 7 mission. Everything is right here. Always has been. All right. We'll need time but to... But we don't have time. Why? Because Evelyn Coyle is in an interrogation room right now, waiting for someone to question her. And I will be the person to do it. I will not be giving this research over to anyone else. That is ludicrous. Who do you think you are? You can't just overrule the Council's decision like it's nothing! You have proof that all these missions are connected? Yes. Do you have proof that it will only affect clones? Yes. That's why you called us here. Exactly. If you'll follow me. You can't be serious. I am. You can't be considering letting her back- But I am. Councilmember Crofton, do you know how much this means to us? All of us? This? could be the turning point. This could be the point where we go back and... But we don't need her for that. You do. Are both of you insane? Councilmember Crofton, we can send someone back in time, forward in time, in any place we want. And I have made it possible. You just... Let me prove it to you. All right. Sure. Prove it. August 15, 2552, 9.04. Just wait a bit longer and stay quiet. Okay, tell us when to leave. Stay quiet? She really can't stop saying that. Because you're still talking, Margo. What can I say? When people I don't like give me orders, I have a hard time following them. <sighs> Never meet your heroes, huh? Leo kind of made me believe they would be nice, sir. I can't get a clear view. Oh, if only... They left the council chamber. Let nobody leave or enter the building. I repeat, let nobody leave or enter. What are they doing? No way they found them already. Why are they entering lockdown protocol? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, we're good. For now. I can't wait to be done with this. I can't wait to get out of here. If I just make things right with Leo first, I'll get to leave without a guilty conscience. Not really, though. It's not just their blood on my hands. But maybe, if I can make one thing right, I can get started on everything else. I thought about it a lot, and I believe I can live with it. I can live with what I've done. As long as I get Leah out of this place. I just want to be a good person again.
You can head out. If you walk out of the side entrance to the garage, you get to the stairwell. It's empty now, but you should hurry. Once you get to the fourth floor, you walk down the hallway to the right. Be very quiet. There's guards to the left of you at that point. Why? Leo's there. So why don't we get them immediately? You'll need the keycard to let them out. My room should be unlocked. I doubt anyone cleared it out yet. The spare keycard is hidden in a book on my nightstand. Any questions? Can you open the door to this thing? Oh, yes. Let's go. Good luck. Let's hope we don't need luck. August 15, 2552, 9.13. As I've explained, the machine as well as the original phenomenon only works on clones. I won't bore you with the scientific details, but it boils down to the clone's brains being mainly mechanic. So, does my machine work on every clone? No, not all clones are the same. The clone has to have had contact with the original phenomenon beforehand, making Commander Coyle and Dr. Tournier ideal subjects. They are not the only possible subjects, though. Maybe it helps to consider this a virus that spreads through transmission. Commander Coyle and Leo Tenier must have come in contact with something their mind didn't comprehend, and they became a part of it as a consequence. Now they're infected, and every single time they use their newfound power of travel, they spread the disease. An example. If I was a clone, being in close proximity to Dr. Tournier during our experiments, it would have affected me, forced my body to change in the same way they as already has. This would have lain dormant until I used the machine on myself, or encountered whatever they encountered. But I am not a clone. This is why I asked Colin, one of our security guards, to be here today. He had been exposed to Evelyn Coyle ten years ago, in the same car accident that eventually led to former council member Wallach's death. You may remember earlier that year, we revived him after he was fatally wounded during a draining exercise. He is in fact a clone, and he has been in contact with Evelyn Coyle. You want to send him... somewhere? With that thing? Yes. Have you tested this yet? How would I test this, if not with his help? Do you consent to being a part of this experiment? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, then. Colin, if you could please get into the tank. Of course, ma'am. Good. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Please relax and refrain from speaking. What happened? Now, if you look in there, he'll be gone. Yes. Where did he go? I am not sure, but I'm assuming he'll be able to tell us in a few minutes when he returns. What? How do you know he'll be back so soon? I have another theory I would like to present. The appearances of the crew members of the Ender 7 mission have gotten more frequent over the past few days. First, I thought it was because of the signal protocol I implemented in my early days as the head of this facility. That it functioned as some sort of bait, but that can't be right. We've had it running all along and never changed anything about it. No, there's another reason. I believe that everyone affected by the Aurora is being called to some points in time and space because something of great magnitude happens there. Something that shapes this spot in the past, present and future. That's insane. You're both hearing her, right? You can't argue with science. This is not science! This is a conspiracy theory you've put together because you're losing your position at this facility. I'm not- This isn't substantial evidence. Uh, what? We need to look over your reports, check your work. Then we can decide whether this holds up. Didn't you hear what I just said? We don't have the time. This is a theory based on nothing but circumstantial evidence. The it's hard not... facts are in my reports, no matter whether you've read them or not. We don't have the time to wait around and- Is this proof enough? August 15, 2552, 9.37. Okay, we're good. 
is that it's crazy that Leah is just a room over, right? We've almost got the crew back together. Yeah, we just need to find Evelyn. Yes. Don't worry, Anna. Once we're all together, it can't be that hard. You said Leo met her at some point. Mm. Then it won't be that hard to track her down with their help. You're right. I'm just worried about what comes after. What do you mean? Our mission was a scam. Everything we worked towards for more than 200 years just went poof. Gone. We can't go back there. Earth is just... Yeah, not a place for us to be. So where do we go? Just into the middle of nowhere, hoping they won't find us? For now, that's our best call. We just... We don't have to plan it all the way through now. We've talked about this. We get Leo and Orson, we get Evelyn. Then we figure out what happened on the spaceship, how we become normal again. Then we find a place to stay. Everything will be okay. You really think that? What else am I supposed to think? You're right. This isn't what we need right now. We For what it's worth, I appreciate your perspective on this. We just need to take it step by step for now. Yeah, let's do that. <sighs> you got the key card? Yes, ma'am. Now, Reed's room. Eliza, which one is it again? Oh, you finished your chat. You're ready to move on. Yes. Two doors down to the right. Better make a quick though. There's something going on downstairs and people might make their way to their room soon. What's going on? I'm not sure. Okay, let's move. Good. Where do we find what we are looking for? Come here to the right of the desk. The data storage medium looks a bit like a small disk in a round slot. It's see-through, but there should be a green or yellow blinking light next to it. Got it. The light's yellow. What do I do? Hold the key card in front of it. It's green now. Then just grab the disk. Done. It should have stored everything about the Andor mission research, including every single thing we found out from Leo up to the moment you ejected it. Perfect. Now the other keycard? It's in a book on her nightstand. Then the action begins, right? Right. You got the tranquilizer set to six hours? Yeah, we should be out of here by then. Like I said, don't waste ammo and we should be good. Okay. <sighs> okay. Eliza, how many guards are with Leo and Orson? Uh, wait. This is unusual. What? There's only one in front of Leo's room and one in the isolated cell check. The others are all in a different part of the building right now. Can you see why? No, I'm trying to get through, but... Hello? Eliza? Eliza? Are they blocking our signals? Probably. We should destroy these. <coughs> that was violent. You know they have a self-destruct button. Yes. <coughs> I do. Huh. I'm getting Leo, you're getting Orson. We meet in the storage room in the basement and then get the hell out. Exactly. Okay. Hey, don't worry. You got this. Yeah, I... What was that? I'm not sure, but I think we just lost our element of surprise. Now or never. August 15, 2552, 9.40. I'm so sorry for the wait, Commander. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. I've always been an admirer of your work, and frankly, it doesn't surprise me that your mission was the first to be successful. All right, let's get to the meat of the story then. What happened? Commander, I know what you have been through must have been very hard, but <laughs> is, is something funny, Commander? How does it feel to be helpless? Pardon You me? know there's something coming, yet you can't do anything to stop it. You feel from a distance that its eyes are on you. There's been an explosion in the- Send as many guards as you need, all of them if necessary. You stay in front of the door. If anyone you don't immediately recognize comes close, shoot to kill. Y yes, madam. 
Associate to the East Wing. You're in command of the group. Yes, sir. <sighs> Your time's running out. Dear Diary, Today the mean man with the glasses gave me a lobotomy. Would you please take this seriously? This is a scientific recording device. I take it you're familiar with the guidelines of your sentence, seeing as you agreed to come here of your own volition. That's a pretty generous term. Well, point being, you are here now, and I don't believe your feelings have much of an effect on your situation. You took the deal. You transferred to Nemesine. What's done is done. Hello, please. Where should I commit a crime? Could you direct me to a good place to rob, please? Given the lack of successes in this area from my predecessor, Dr. Dent, and the fact that we don't have access to any of the pre-existing research in this because field- Because we're working in a space prison! Because we're working in a space prison. I'm not expecting any major breakthroughs. Amazon, coming to all podcast streaming platforms on July 17th. Remember where you are. Aurora the Last Thing returns with its final episode on September 5 at 4 p.m. Central European Summertime. It was created by Laura Reicher and is protected under Creative Commons 4.0 International License. This episode was produced by Elena Herzabacher. It was written, directed, and edited by Laura Reicher. The script was edited by Victoria Krenn and Sophie Earhart. This episode featured Marie-Christine Heiling as Anna Kestner, Sophie Earhart as Margit Nielsen as well as the disembodied voice, Mona Reicher as Eliza, Victoria Krenn as Dr. Reed, Karine Stickler as Evelyn Coyle, Jasmine Lachbaumer as Leo Tanyi, Dilara Karatscha as Councilmember Alderman, Emily Lauras as Councilmember Crofton, Andrew Mercader as Councilmember Packett, Kai as Guard Jacobs, Jonas Schweiger as Guard Weaver, Laura Reicher as Guard Colin, and Sivan Ross as Guard Sherman. If you want to help us out, show your support, tell a friend about this podcast. Or, if you're feeling really crazy today, you can even tell two friends. You could also review a podcast wherever you like. The best way for us to gain new listeners is with your help. Because, let's be honest, our marketing budget is non-existent. If you're interested in bloopers, extra content, or you just want to financially support the podcast, make sure to subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash auroraverlasting. And for some background infos, feel free to check out our social media. We're at aurora underscore everlast on Twitter and at aurora underscore everlasting underscore podcast on Instagram. Thank you for listening. <laughs>